Hello everyone, welcome to part three of my series of videos on vSphere with Tansu running with NSXT. So as you can see, the installation of my first supervisor cluster is uh, complete. Um, it's running, everything looks healthy. So let's see how this looks like in the vSphere cluster view. So you can see now we have three supervisor control plane VMs being configured. And in looking at one of those, for example, you will see the VMs are actually multi-homed, meaning they have two virtual NICs, of which the first is connected to the management network. Um, and the second is actually connected to an NSX segment um, through which we access the supervisor cluster through, using the API. So this is being automatically configured and uh, uh, created an NSXT and um, linked to a tier one, which I will show you uh, a bit later. So in the cluster view, you can obviously check a number of things just to quickly show how that looks like. So on the namespaces, you can see general information. We are on a tiny. We can change or edit a content library. We can review our management network and our workload network um, parameters. So uh, how we interact with the workload network is actually doing through NSXT. We can review or change storage uh, certificates and we can configure a image registry. And in my next video, I will enable Harbor um, to show you how Harbor is being configured and how it looks like using NSXT with vSphere and Tons with Tansu. So this is the vSphere view, but um, I'm also interested in NSXT view. So let's start with tier one gateways. Um, as you may remember, we, as a prerequisite, we configured a tier zero, but no tier one whatsoever. And as you can see here, we now have automatically configured through the configuration of the supervisor cluster, a tier one gateway. And this is a reserved gateway, tier one gateway for the supervisor cluster and all related namespaces. So um, it will run on one single segment. Um, so each system namespace for this supervisor cluster is shared across um, a, a single segment. And if we, clicking, we click on that segment, you can see uh, the segment name being created and the IPEM function in NSXT automatically configured a slash 28 network and configure the gateway for the tier one for that given segment. So we can make sure that the supervisor cluster VMs on their workload management, on the workload network can uh, reach their gateway and interact through, um, uh, we can interact with it through the low banners in NSXT. Again, the segment right now, besides the pre configured segments, only one system uh, configured segment. Let's now look at some uh, net rules because it will also create net rules for the first supervisor cluster VM. So uh, again, um, first of all, a no net rule to make sure that pot to pot traffic is not being netted. Then a no net rule to make sure that pot to any low balance traffic also will not be netted. This is obviously for performance reasons and um, east west traffic doesn't need to be netted in that sense. And then finally, we have a source net rule, which ensures that any traffic leaving the supervisor cluster uh, for this um, leaving this tier one will be uh, translated on the uplink of the tier one to uh, this IP. So 122.1, that's the first egress IP we uh, which is available through the range of egress IPs we, we configured in the wizard. Let's move on to load balancing. So out of the box, when everything is completed, it will create a distributed load balancer, which is um, being used for east-west load balancing for cluster IP in Kubernetes, and a small load balancer instance being used for ingress access to the supervisor cluster which means that the Kubernetes API and the web page where you can download the CLI, page, uh, CLI tools from is being provisioned or being accessed through this small load balancer instance. So let's look a bit further because we have two virtual servers here. The first is listening on the first ingress IP 
on port 6443, which is the Kubernetes API port, and a second one for the default 443 um, HTTPS port to provision that uh, web page with the uh, CLI tools. And the server pool consists of the IPs of the supervisor control VMs on the workload network. And these are obviously automatically configured. Um, obviously, you can also look at the IP address pools. So based on our input in the workload um, configuration pages, it has automatically configured IP address pools and IP address blocks. So um, these are for ingress, egress, and uh, this is actually the bots IP block, or sorry, services. And this is the IP block of which this pool is being configured from. Also, the distributed firewall will get some configuration. So we, so so the distributed firewall in the distributed firewall, you would see a policy which consists of one single rule, which allows any any traffic only for members being the IP addresses of the supervisor cluster VMs to ensure that the, these ones can talk freely with each other and anything else get don gets denied. Note that we use apply to to only apply these rules to the supervisor cluster VMs via VNIC, so nowhere else. Finally, in the UI, you can see all container related information through inventory containers page. And this is really useful for data operations because you can see all namespaces. So these are obviously all uh, system generated namespaces being used by the cluster supervisor cluster and all their related pods, services and networking components, as you can see here. So for example, 33 pods are running in the cube system namespace. And these are all system uh, pods for, for the supervisor cluster. You can also look at uh, Kubernetes services or any load balancers being configured. Now, let's check how this looks when we access the UI. So I'm on a jump box and as you can see, I'm able to reach um, the, the web page to download the Kubernetes CLI tools to operate it with the Kubernetes cluster using the kubectl and vSphere plugin. So I've went through this um, uh, getting started page for my Linux jump box and I'm able to log in using kubectl on the supervisor cluster. So here you can see I will log in And let's use change to make sure that we are using the uh, api.ray.salab.local context. And then we can interact with the cluster. And we can check, for example, the get nodes dash o wide command. And we see the supervisor cluster VMs. Uh, with the master role and the vSphere host being configured as their agents, meaning they are ready to receive, uh, ready to run pods or uh, uh, yeah, or guest clusters in a given namespace. So right now it's empty, uh, at least all the user namespaces are empty, but uh, the hosts are ready to run pods on the environment and interact with NSXT to get um, the logical switching and networking done. So this for now concludes the, this demonstration or video. On um, the next video, I will configure Harbor and will show how, how Harbor is being configured or how Harbor is being uh, basically configured in NSXT and how you can connect through NSXT with Harbor and how it interoperates. And then we are ready to actually you know, configure namespaces and install uh, pods and see what happens in NSXT. So 
Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, I appreciate any feedback. Uh, let me know what you think and uh, I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.